Let's invert the politics mm -hmm. because we had another officer involved shooting a few mm -hmm. months ago that uh, did not result in widespread rioting. And that was Ashley Babbitt. So we got the story from who, who CNN. Who killed Ashley Babbitt? We don't know. We still Here's don't know. the story. Yeah. Prosecutors won't pursue charges in shooting death of Ashley Babbitt during Capitol riot. Long story short, they said the officer didn't understand what was happening. She defied uh, repeated commands. The officer was scared. He fired. He killed her. Through a door. Through a door. He couldn't see her. She wasn't holding anything. He they were fired cops blindly into a crowd. Mm. Yep. Okay. Justified, they said. <laughs> These are the same people who on January 5th said, we don't need any reinforcements. We don't need any extra cops. We don't need any National Guard. Yep. January 6th, January 5th. We know all this stuff is coming. We don't need anybody. Babbitt's the girl that climbed up in the Capitol building, right? No, she was standing behind a door. A door, yeah. She was standing behind a door, and the cop, the, the Capitol uh, police, shot right through the door and just killed a woman who was just standing there. Okay, but this is the girl I'm thinking of. The one that, like, the only it person like she was who was murdered. And put her head in the window, and they saw a head pop up and fired. Wait, that's not a check, threat. I'm sorry. Seeing no. someone's yeah. face isn't a threat. I'm sitting here, you know, arguing that. Uh, in, in many instances, there could have been an alternative for the cop. It's, it's, it's so sad that these, these young black men have lost their lives in these circumstances. It's regrettable. And then he, here you have a woman who quite literally just peeks her head through, through a window and yeah. takes a bolt to the neck. There were cops behind her. What, like, so if you watch the video, she goes down and immediately a SWAT team is right there within like 10 or 15 mm -hmm. seconds. What if that guy fired and hit one of those cops? Mm -hmm. This to me is... is, is they is, would be prosecuting him. You know They'd what it, be investigating it, yep. him. You know what it is? It's very, very simple. She's not you, human, dude. That's listen, why. Hmm. these people messed with the seat of power. The, the Trump supporters yep. went to the Democrats' home, business home. In, in these other places, it's on the street. It's on a highway. In Portland, it's outside a police association building. A federal it, courthouse. I yeah, mean, the Democrats don't work there. Well, I, it's still part of the seat of power for that locality in that region. But it wasn't like they went to Pelosi's office. Right. So all this is symbolic, which means it's bull. It means it right. doesn't have any resonance in fact. There's no equality under the law anymore. There's none. So They're not even prosecuting or investigating. The only person who was murdered was Ashley Babbitt. All those other deaths have been ruled not homicides. They're not even prosecuting anybody. And they're not even prosecuting. They're holding people in solitary confinement. 23 hours a day, people have been charged with trespassing. And some people are being beaten by the, by the guards. There's been reports like one guy was brutally beaten and he's got like broken eye sockets. Wow. Look, if you want to really get in on the details on this, there's one Julie Kelly. Check her out. She has been following all this. She's been tracking all the court cases. We talked about having her come on my podcast. Check her out. Julie Kelly. She's doing great work. Hi, Julie, by the way. <laughs> so what is this guy's a federal cop? So they're not, he's not getting this. The he's he's cap hammer. Capitol Hill police. I mean, I don't know why they're not investing. I mean, the only reason they're not investing is because MAGA patriots are not human. Exactly. Well, obviously. Yeah, everyone knew that. Though, yeah. Dude. yeah. But it's, I mean, you look at how the media, you, you know what, I'll, I'll put it this it's way, though. super dark. I, I, I am still kind of optimistic for a few reasons, right? I talked about the media's collapse, the rise of independent platforms like Substack. One of the projects Ian spearheading now is, uh, I don't know, we, we should come up with a name for it. Yeah, MetaNet. I don't know. MetaNet? Do you oh, come up with that? No, we we're talking about that on a call oh, a couple okay. days ago. <laughs> the idea yeah, I was going to say, because like, if you don't have that trademarked or the domain bought no, yet, like, okay, don't say done. on air whoa, whoa, that you want to do it. It's an open source project free for oh, all. Everyone wins. Sick. With the right. domain. The goal yeah. is the to create though, an, yeah. an open source program that can create a subscription platform for everybody that networks with other platforms so oh, no sick. one can be banned anymore at your own website. But this is going to decentralize the internet and strip away a lot of the power from the narrative machine. I take a look at CNN. When we, when we, when we Google search riot and we get all this mainstream news about the Capitol, but nothing about Minnesota. Yeah. And then we got one super chat that figured it out for us. You needed to search for peaceful protest. Oh I'm my not, gosh, I'm, that's brilliant. Yes, right. of course. We did. We, we so we, we searched yeah. riot and yeah. got capital and we searched peaceful protest and it was like Minnesota protest, peaceful <laughs> protest, Mike Elliott. And so I, I think about this. Oh, that's interesting. At, at what point do people stop watching CNN because they're not getting news anymore? Let me put it this way. I saw a popular YouTuber. I won't say their name. They're a progressive. And they posted about Donald Trump for their like main segment. And I was like, dude, it's, it's, it's April 14th. Yeah. And there's riots. The Derek Chauvin trial is in full swing and coming to an end. There is so much rich news to pump into the veins of an unsuspecting populace. <laughs> Instead, yep. they're like Donald Trump. So I, 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 I'm thinking this. 
You know, a lot of people were asking the question, what will we do after Trump? I remember news, or, news outlets were talking about it. And I remember people asked me that. They were like, well, I mean, you talk politics all day. Like, what are you going to do when Trump's gone? I'll be like, bro. <laughs> earlier, there's other things l- besides l- 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 Last year, Trump. I was talking about Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. I was yes. talking about Sonic the Hedgehog so and, and, and Birds of Prey and how the not woke fun kids movie was way more entertaining. I was like, I got everything to talk about because I care about news, not politics. Now yeah. that Trump's out, we got so much to talk about. Chauvin trial, riots, arrests. Yet how are these, these news outlets like CNN and these progressive YouTubers still making segments about Trump? At a certain point, they're going to be trapped in the past. And I imagine regular people are going to be watching and they're going to be like, hey, I heard about this thing that happened in Detroit. And the guy's going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, Donald Trump. And they're going to be like, dude, Trump's not president for months. Why are you still talking about this? They're going to chase Trump into irrelevancy. And I, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for it. How many, how many of these progressive YouTubers actually just made their whole entire career? out of Trump, Mm -hmm. right? That's all they know. That's all their clicks, all their views. Everything comes from that. They're not well-rounded people. That's the grift, baby. Right. You you hop on the anti-Trump train. So like I came up out of this uh, little niche in the internet called the Manosphere, but Mm -hmm. I was able to break out of that because not only was I capable of talking about those issues, but I have like a well-rounded background of education, experience, knowledge, education. I'm happy and easy to talk about all kinds of stuff. So I'm knowledge. 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 You know what I value more than my Ferrari? Knowledge. Knowledge. (laughs) Books. How you like them apples? By the way, Julie Kelly, also from Chicago. Yeah, I was going to say, well, with a name like Julie Kelly, I assume her uncles are on the police department Orland, too. Right. Orland Park. <laughs> Orland Park. Yeah. Continue, so, continue. So no, it's like they're just gonna be exposed for being one note people. One note people. One note people. And those people are gonna die. All of you guys out there still making the same We're content all gonna die. that you made in twenty fourteen, you gotta evolve. How boring is that life? Anyway, I'm I feel bad for those people. I feel bad for the people that are still talking about Trump, still talking about dating and mating, still talking about that one thing that got you attention. Yeah. Over and over. I mean it's Dude. it's like it's like being Bananarama. And having to go play that one damn song all the look, time. Look at, look at yes, CNN. That's exactly it. <laughs> look at, look, CNN's a great example. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> ratings are starting to improve for a lot of people. We're, we, we had this period after the inauguration where ratings started to go down because people are like, okay, I'm done. It's over. Now interest is starting to come back in a variety of stories. Yeah. And a lot of people are reporting on like YouTube and podcasts. Ratings are starting to come back. It's a good day. But CNN's ratings are still going down. Oh, oh no. Oh, look at uh, some terrible ways. Look, look at, uh, look at, Reliable sources. I love that name. Reliable <laughs> sources. Okay. The best. They 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 had this whole thing where throughout the Trump presidency they talked about the right wing media ecosystem and it's and it's fueling Trump, and it worked <laughs> as a media show because it was Trump's narrative networks. These these various outlets that were propping up Trump. Now that Trump isn't president, it's just one guy saying like, "I watched Fox News yesterday and Tucker pissed me off," and I'm just like, "I don't care. Yeah. I don't care what Tucker said that you don't like because." He's not the president. He's not fueling a president. Joe Biden is the president. But when your whole grift is built upon ragging on right wing media, once they lose relevance, he has nothing to pivot to. What's he going to do? The New York Times announced that they were forming the, uh, the, the tech division was forming a union. Oh, yeah. People are going to watch that, right? Yeah. That's, that, but that really happened. I mean, who cares, though? Right? Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> so he's trying to nobody. milk desperately like Tucker Carlson is the new Trump. Remember when Brian Souther said that? <laughs> What? No. He said Tucker Carlson sounds a lot like Trump, yeah, doesn't you, he? You wish. And yeah. people wish are just like, Trump. they're no, begging we, for a new Trump. We wish Trump was more like Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yes, yes. Hey, fair enough. Fair enough. They don't have anything to offer. I, I feel like I, I got more enjoyment reading some news articles and then talking to you guys about it than watching it on TV and being told about it. But I think yep. a lot of people don't have a friend that they can talk to about politics. That's why we're here. Exactly. Right. Thank you for being my friend, Jack. No, you, not, I mean, my pleasure, sir. <laughs> but I, my pleasure, absolutely. The, Il- you, the Illinois Jeez. boys will always be a friend right. to you. Yeah. I lived in right. Chicago mm-hmm. for three years. Oh, oh what? Yeah. Uh, so were you, were you born oh, there? Oh, no, you're not, no, I wasn't. Well, hold on. Illinois Naperville boys. doesn't count, buddy. Is, <laughs> hey, hold on. I was born. No, I was actually born in Chicago, so I have my, I have my citizenship. Whenever, whenever I, I'm talking to people and they're like, Are you they from say they're from, no, oh, okay. no, I'm not. From when, we're from the same neighborhood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Tim and I, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we, were, we were probably there around the same time. I'd imagine. Yeah. We left when I was pretty little, but we were right by, can I say, but where, I'm older or, than, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we were right by Midway. I was yes, just saying, I, it must be important. Midway. Yeah. And I'm a bit older than you. So I was definitely a little kid and you were still around. God, but I am grandpa of here. When, whenever I talked uh, and also, uh, oh, sorry. I don't know if I should, I should say this was a very prominent, very, very famous progressive who lived like two blocks away from me. This is really yeah, crazy. Weird. But uh, uh, whenever I ask people like, where are you from? They say Chicago. 
I'll be like, oh, me too. Where Where are you from? They'll say Naperville. Mm -hmm. For those that aren't familiar, it's like what forty or fifty They're miles. Like, I'm from Iowa. Yeah, it's like a yeah, 40 I'm from <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> That's hilarious, dude. I just, I had what said someone say that to me. I was like, oh, what part? And they're like Rockford. Yeah. Rockford, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like three hours away. No, yeah, it was, no. Like, it was, like, yeah. it was like an hour, two, no. two hours. But to be fair, like I, so I actually grew up in the suburbs. We left the city when I was pretty little, but not Naperville, not that far away. I, I, I mean, never, it's a big I will place. never have to say I'm from Naperville. It's a big place. There's no question about it. Yeah, yeah, and like I, to be fair, what are you supposed to say? I'm from Naperville. Well, Where's no that? one knows it's where that is, Chicago. Chicago. No, it's also true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just tell people the Philly area because we were in the Jersey side, so it's not literally Philly. I know, Chicago. But the first time I went to do your show in Philly, right? I'm driving up to Philly. I get a hotel in Philly and then I like put in the address to go to your house. I'm like, <laughs> wait, is this New Jersey? It's That's 10 hilarious. minutes from downtown. Why did I get a hotel in Philly? It was 10 That's minutes hilarious. from downtown. That's the thing. It's That's literally, you're downtown, you cross the bridge, you're there. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. I know. Still, New But New what am I supposed to say to people? So I, I, I'm from I, Southern I New Jersey, it. dude. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not from there. No one's gonna admit Our that. show is there. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you all next time.